This is worksheet one of the factor label packet and this video is going to fill out this entire worksheet and also in doing so explain how to do the problems on worksheet two and worksheet three. Uh, one thing I will say from the start of this is that this packet is really not chemistry. This is a short packet that is going to teach you a uh, problem solving technique that you will be using in the next three units after this. So when you're setting up these problems, some of you are going to feel like some of them you could solve in your head, especially at the beginning, um, and you're going to be tempted to just write down an answer and circle it. But that's not going to be accepted for credit because the whole point of this packet is for you to learn how to set up the work. So the work that you show is really the thing that we're looking at more than your final answer. When we get to the next few packets and we apply this problem solving technique to chemistry ideas that are less familiar to you, you won't be able to rely on doing these things in your head. So you have to learn this problem solving technique and you should simply be thankful that we start off using easy examples that you probably could do in your head. We do that so that rather than focusing on the complexity of the problem, you can focus on the problem solving technique. So. Here we go. Factor label is a way to convert from one set of units to another. And every single one of these problems is going to be set up using this basic equation here. You're going to start off by writing what you're trying to solve for, what the answer is that you want, and you're going to set it equal to the number and the units that you have been given. You're then going to multiply by one or more fractions that will lead you to your answer. And which fractions you choose and how you set up those fractions is what we're going to show you in this video. So, if you look at the first problem, it asks you effectively to convert 156.2 milliliters into liters. So what you want to find are liters and you set that equal to the information you've been given, which is 156.2 milliliters. Now, some of you may already know in your head that one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. If you don't know that, that's okay. I'd like you to all find the common conversion chart that's at the very front of this packet. You will be provided with these conversion factors <clears throat> on the test and throughout this unit. So you're not required to memorize that one liter equals a thousand milliliters or any of these other conversions. You can always look back to the table. But when you do look back to that conversion table, you will see that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. I'm going to write that off to the side. We're going to make a fraction out of that. In factor label, when you make a fraction, the rule is that the top and bottom have to be equal to each other. So we're going to make a fraction that has a thousand milliliters on one side and one liter on the other side. And when we set up this fraction, we can almost draw this like a little picket fence. Okay, This is going to keep us organized. Organization is kind of key here. So you're going to notice that the unit you're trying to get rid of in this problem is milliliters and the unit you're trying to end up in is liters. So when you set up the fraction you are going to purposely put the 1000 milliliters on the bottom instead of the one liter on the bottom. That leaves you with the one liter on the top. Now why did I tell you to purposely put the thousand milliliters on the bottom? It doesn't have to do with the number 1,000, it has to do with the units of milliliters. In this problem solving technique, if you have the same units on the top of a picket fence as you have on the bottom of a picket fence, you can cancel them out. Not the numbers that go with them, but the units. So when we cancel out milliliters, the only units that we have left are liters. And those are the units that we want to be in to solve for our problem. And so this is when we know it's time to stop and do math. 
Now, when we do the math, any numbers that are on the top of our picket fence get multiplied. So we do 156.2 times 1. And any numbers on the bottom of our picket fence get divided. So we take that 156.2, multiply by 1, and then divide it by 1,000. And so this is going to give us an answer of 0.1562, and our units are going to be liters. We'll box our final answer, and we'll be ready to move on to the next problem. <clears throat> the next problem asks us to solve for centimeters if we start off with 9.85 meters. So effectively, it's asking us, if I have 9.85 meters, what would that be equal to in centimeters? So I'm going to set up my little picket fence to keep myself organized. And I'm going to go to my common conversion table. And on the common conversion table, I'm going to look for a conversion between meters and centimeters. And I'm going to find that one meter equals 100 centimeters. It's worth noticing on that conversion table that hopefully you're looking at right now that there are columns. Ooh, the first column farthest to the left lists all the conversions that have to do with meters. So centimeters, millimeters, decimeters, kilometers are all in that column. The next column is all the conversions with liters. The next one's all the conversions with grams. Those are all metric units. There's a fourth column that has English units. One's primarily used in the United States. Feet, inches, miles, gallons, quarts, pounds. And then a fifth column, which we won't use as often, but we can't forget about, that converts from English to metric. So pounds to grams, quarts to liters, so on and so forth. If you take time to look at the organization of the table, it'll make it easier to navigate for the rest of the unit. So... Back to our problem at hand, I have 1 meter and 100 centimeters. And the way I determine which I'm going to put on the bottom of my fraction is by looking to see that I'm trying to cancel out meters. I don't want my final answer in meters. I instead want my final answer in centimeters. So because of that, I'm going to choose to put the 1 meter on the bottom of the fraction and the 100 centimeters on the top. Now that I have meters on the top and bottom of my picket fence, I can cancel out meters, but not the numbers that go with them, which means that the only units I have not canceled out are centimeters, and that's what I want my answer to be in, and so I know it's time to solve my problem. Numbers across the top get multiplied. 8.95, excuse me, 9.85 times 100, and then divided by 1. And so that gives us a final answer of 985 with units of centimeters, and I box my final answer. So in summary, a key point of this problem-solving technique is that if I want to cancel out a unit that's on the top of my picket fence, I need to multiply by a fraction. And that fraction is going to have to have that same unit on the bottom. So I'm purposely manipulating my fractions so that I can cancel out the units that I want to cancel out. All right, we're going to move on now. The problems we've solved so far are going to be like the problems on worksheet two. The next two problems that we're going to solve are going to be like the problems on worksheet three. And these are slightly more complex because you have to use two or more conversion factors to solve the problem. So there's going to be basically two steps, two fractions in our picket fence. The setup is the same. In this problem, I want to know how many centimeters are equal to 0.456 kilometers. I'm going to set up a picket fence, but when I look at my conversion table, there's no direct conversion that takes me from kilometers to centimeters. Instead, I'm going to find 
that one kilometer equals a thousand meters and I'm going to find that one meter equals a hundred centimeters. So I'm going to have to make two steps to solve this problem since there's not a direct conversion. So my first goal is to get rid of kilometers so I'm going to use this first conversion factor and I'm going to put the one kilometer in the bottom which leaves the thousand meters on top. My kilometers cancel out. I'm going to make another step because right now if I solve the problem I'd be in meters and I don't want to be in meters I want to be in centimeters. So for my next conversion I'm going to use this one here and the one meter is going to go on the bottom leaving the 100 centimeters on the top and I chose to do it that way because then I have meters on top and bottom and they cancel out. Now the only units not canceled out are centimeters and that's what I want to solve for so I know it's time to do my math. 0.456 times 1000 times 100. I could divide twice by 1 since they're on the bottom, but that's not going to change my final answer because it's just dividing by 1, and so my final answer is 45,600 centimeters, and I box my final answer. Last problem. This one wants to know how many seconds are equal to 3 days. So if I'm on vacation for three days, how many seconds was I on vacation for? So, this is going to be a couple of steps here. In one day, there are 24 hours. That cancels out my days. Now I need to cancel out hours. So in one hour, there are 60 minutes. That cancels out hours. Now I need to cancel out minutes. In one minute, there are 60 seconds. That cancels out minutes and leaves me with everything canceled out but seconds, which is what I wanted for my final answer, so I'm ready to solve. I'm going to multiply 3 times 24, times 60, and times 60. I could divide 3 times by 1, but that's not going to change my final answer. So, my final resulting answer is 200 and 59,200 seconds, which is a whole lot of seconds. So, hopefully you filled out these problems. We're going to practice them on worksheet 2 and 3 in class.